Camden, New Jersey is the reason I can't get scared anymore. A car backfiring, slasher movies, Halloween horror nights, inflation. None of that stuff phases me anymore because of my years spent working in Camden, New Jersey. Camden's a city where you roll through stoplights because if you stop your car, someone will take it. <laughs> the city is located in southern New Jersey, just across the Delaware River from Philadelphia. It lacks the general charm and classiness commonly associated with Philly folks. And when I worked there in my early 20s, it was the crime capital and the murder capital of the United States. Fun fact. <laughs> By day, I worked as a reporter for a daily newspaper. It was not unheard of for me to go cover a homicide that I learned about over the police scanner, only to arrive at the scene before the cops had gotten there to solve said murder. And by night, to make some extra money on the side one autumn, I took a seasonal $7 an hour minimum wage job haunting the battleship New Jersey <laughs> on the Camden City Riverfront. <laughs> the Halloween season production was called Voyage of the Living Dead. Now, I did theater as a kid, so the audition process of scream like you're being dismembered limb by limb was a breeze for me, okay? I know how to make some noise. I'm from New Jersey. <laughs> After passing the audition process to work aboard the haunted battleship, I was subjected to the training to become a professional ghoul for hire. We were taught how to do our own special effects makeup, ghostly white faces, sunken eyes, and a lot of fake blood. We learned how to master that vacant, distant look in our eyes, like we've really seen some shit. <laughs> we workshopped various types of moans. You get it. And we were taught to haunt the dreams of our paying customers for the rest of their mortal lives. At the end of our training process, our director stood before us reading off final logistics and casually added, all right, you guys, that's it. You're ready to scare some people. Oh, and I know most of you are returning creeps and ghouls. Just a reminder to you all that someone here will inevitably be punched in the face by a scared customer this spooky season. It happens every year. A customer will get scared and lash out with violence, so just don't retaliate and know that it will definitely happen again. <laughs> it always does. <laughs> My colleagues who had all worked on murder mystery, dinner theaters, and various haunted events before all nodded matter-of-factly as though this was a super normal work update we were all aware of. Whereas I looked horrified. Whoa, 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 someone is going to punch one of us in the face during this Halloween production, and it's not a matter of if, but when and whom among us will be punched in the face at work this season. <laughs> Naturally, I was both petrified and also very broke, thanks to my recent graduation from journalism school. And so I suited up in my scary garb and hoped to the devil himself I would not be the ghoul to take a hit to the jaw this year. My colleagues and I received our spooky assignments based primarily on costume sizing and creepy talents. There were silent scarers who lurked in hallways, people in straight jackets rocking back and forth in front of staticky television sets. There was a bloodied pregnant mother in a nursery <laughs> whose zombie baby had eaten its way out of her womb. She named her little bundle of screams Jacob Damien. <laughs> there was a swinging live cadaver in a black body bag. Personally, I didn't find any of these grisly scenes especially frightening. Just like I did in my day job as a reporter, I just sort of neutrally observed them and took them for what they were. <laughs> oh, a zombie person stitched their own mouth shut with a needle and wrote the word help across their forehead in blood. Sure, yeah, that checks out. <laughs> My journalism career taught us that none of us are really that different. We could all only be mere steps away from also writing creepy messages on our own bodies and blood if we found ourselves in someone else's spooky shoes. 
As for my own role in Voyage of the Living Dead, my performance was a solo venture. I believe it was thanks to my scary good star power. <laughs> With wild hair and a shrieking scream, I would greet patrons by yelling in their faces, running to an electric chair, strapping myself in, and then repeatedly flipping the switch while laughing and screaming maniacally until they left the room, and then I quickly and quietly reset for the next group. <laughs> I gave my performance my all, yelling, working myself into a frenzy. I'm the type of person who gives my 110% in both my work and my artistic endeavors. I practiced so hard during our preview nights that I started going hoarse. And I put myself on a bit of a vocal rest, keeping lozenges and water nearby. It was going to be a long October, and I could not continue my electrifying nightly monologues without the vocal power to really deliver the performance that each of our paying customers truly deserved. <laughs> All the while, I remained terrified that one of our patrons would find my performance a bit too compelling and sock me in the face. <laughs> I wanted to move people with my performance, but not move them to committing assault, <laughs> just like to have a good time. I wasn't even sure how I would react to being punched in the face as a grown-up. Like many people, I'd taken some accidental knocks over the years as a kid playing sports, but I'd never truly been punched before. I was so paranoid by the looming thought of it, I assumed I would simply pass away if it ever happened to me. <laughs> I was okay writing about other people's harrowing experiences in my journalism job, but I didn't want to be the subject of my own awful headline. Jolt to the jaw, electrifying actress punches out early, meets shocking demise. No thank you. Our customers were young couples on dates, groups of friends, confused tourists who thought they were getting a normal tour of a historic <laughs> battleship, <laughs> only to realize it was a haunted seasonal event. One night, we were told a Boy Scout troop would be visiting and then staying for an overnight camping event on the ship. We assumed the Boy Scouts would be older, like teenage Eagle Scout age, who would to totally be old enough to punch one of us in the face. But as the evening progressed, my swinging cadaver and a body bag friend from the room next door came to tell me, be ready, they're really little. A few moments later, a group of trembling seven and eight-year-olds <laughs> filed into my room, looking traumatized <laughs> in their little badge-filled vests and khaki shorts. I didn't dial back my performance at all. <laughs> I'm a professional. But it's safe to assume they probably did not sleep that night <laughs> and were most likely scarred for life by the resident demons who are just doing our diabolical duties in exchange for minimum wage. <laughs> As the Halloween season wore on and I had so far remained punch free, one evening as the whispers traveled through the halls, my swinging cadaver and a body bag friend from the room next door tiptoed in and he said, Hey, did you hear? Emily got punched in the face tonight. Yeah, a guy was on a date and he got scared and he just started swinging and he popped her right in the face. Yes! <laughs> I thought to myself, oh my God, yes! I thought my performance would be so captivating that someone would punch me in the face, but instead they punched the bloody pregnant mom whose zombie baby had eaten its way out of her womb in the face which inevitably meant I would not get punched in the face. I had escaped unharmed. And for those of you still thinking, Julia, you could have also easily been punched in the face, my answer to you is no. <laughs> Our director said someone always gets punched every year and to me, at that time, I do not know why, that truly meant that once the zombie mom got hit, it meant I was safe for the season. <laughs> I don't know why. Ghoul math. <laughs> Halloween came and went, and my haunted gig ended, and soon after, 
I moved on from the newspaper reporting career and from New Jersey altogether. But I'll never forget that the thing that scared me most wasn't, you know, just being from New Jersey <laughs> or reporting about Camden City crimes or interviewing crooked politicians or rolling through stoplights at 2 a.m. on the way home from work. No, the thing that scared me most was the constant looming fear that I would be punched in the face while fake electrocuting myself in front of Boy Scouts for $7 an hour. <laughs> After surviving that unscathed, I have never felt fear again. <laughs> Thank you. Julia Lechner!